Hey everybody, Jazzy here. Here's my recap of year four of Thrill of the Grill, my solo Twitch world with Warly. Last year was productive. We cleared the ruins, we killed Dragonfly, Claws, Clops, and Ancient Guardian. We also harvested a respectable amount of wood and set up some bee boxes and a basic crop farm. The chest zone is slowly taking shape, but we are gonna need a lot more wood before we can call that done. So my first task in autumn is to move Berger into position for tree farming. When I said last time that we got Berger close to the oasis, I was mistaken. Turns out we left him in the second deciduous forest, which is not all that close to our base. So I'm moving him on over to a peninsula right behind Pig King, and later I can set up the birch nut trees nearby. Day 221, I am turfing up an area for our future gecko pen and building all the walls. I'm trying to keep the pen small so that the geckos will constantly be frightened by Chester when I leave him inside. This will optimize their grass production and keep them running around whenever the area is loaded up. I'm also adding this double layer of walls because geckos have a nasty tendency of glitching through walls and fences. It's no big deal if we need to occasionally herd a few back inside, but I'm hoping to minimize that happening as much as possible. The grass I transplanted in spring has matured at this point so I can start to spawn geckos. My understanding is that every time you harvest or dig a grass tuft in proximity to a mature grass tuft, you have a 1% chance of spawning a herd of geckos that could be up to 6. You won't get any spawning if there is already a gecko within 5 tiles of the grass, so once they spawn, you gotta move them out of the area if you want to spawn more. A couple days later, I'm moving my first batch of geckos into the pen. The traditional method is to herd them through a corridor from your spawning location to the pen, but I don't like spending those kind of resources on a temporary build. So instead, I generally prefer to use an ice staff to freeze them near the pen entrance and then nudge them in one at a time. You need a small entryway room with separate doors so that no geckos escape while you move new ones inside. And now it's time to harvest the deciduous trees. I bring a single piece of honey to aggro Berger and put him to work. You can have him swipe trees to knock them down, but I prefer to have him use the ground pound as much as possible because it also uproots some of the stumps and I'll have fewer to dig up later. This was definitely the largest tree harvest we've had so far. I just wish I could do this more often, but we lose birch nut seeds if we harvest outside of autumn. With our newly acquired supply of boards, I'm starting work on our first major food farm, which is a bunny man fire farm. I know a guide has recently been done on this build, and the creator did not exactly mention the history of the concept. Big surprise there. But the design actually has been around for a while. I was first shown the build by Epi, and I'll provide a link to the video we made together about a year ago. It is an extremely efficient farm, and even with the recent nerf to Bunnymen drops in the Reap What You Sow beta, it will still be a great source of meat and carrots. I was heading out to go find the loot stash when I passed by Berger. He had decided to pass out right in the middle of the pig village and the pig started to attack him. Whenever he wakes up from hibernation, he starts yawning, which will put nearby players to sleep. It's really dangerous to be around when this happens, so as soon as I saw the pigs rushing in for the slaughter, I had to run away really fast. Your funeral, bros! Honestly, I should have hammered your homes when I had the chance. Before Kloss, I dipped into the caves to hammer a few bunnyman hutches and gather the resources needed to finish the fire farm. I can start a bunnyman war while they're outside, then hammer each hutch during the day after they've all gone back inside. As with pig houses, you can always rebuild rabbit hutches, and in general it's better to hammer them and rebuild in a more accessible location so that you can farm them more often. Year 4 Loot Stash at this point, I would be throwing curses at Santa for still not giving me a Krampus sack if he wasn't so gosh darn generous. We got a Mandrake and a Strident Trident blueprint, which usually drops from Crab King. So I'm not extra spiteful this Christmas, but come on RNG. I am counting down the days until Winter's Feast when we'll be able to fight Kloss every 20 days. Day 242, we get our second Dragonfly kill. And now that we have our sign in a better position, we don't need to deal with any larvae sneaking through the walls. Which was good because I failed a lot at kiting this time around. Love you beyond words, Bone Armor. Now give me my two green gems. Back at the base, I'm using the Ice Staff to farm some crows. <laughs> 
I'm sorry, this game is ridiculous. I'm going to need over a hundred jet feathers to make enough feather pencils to label all my chests, so I figure I'll put in the time now. You can use a boomerang, but I think the ice staff is cheaper to use. You get 20 uses, and as long as I'm sitting on a supply of blue gems, I might as well put them to good use before they all disappear into my unhealthy moon dial addiction. Then I'm back to work on the bunny man farm. Now for the oven, Epi's design uses mini signs, which are stackable, so the bunny man will die really fast. However, this did produce a lot of lag on my previous world, and I don't really need it to work super fast. So I'm planting some grass tufts instead. They won't burn as hot as stacked mini signs, but they will burn for longer. So I'm not as worried about having to replace them if I don't activate the flingo on time. I'm running low on jelly beans, so in spring I go for another bee queen fight. I'm using Volcoat Shofa just like before, but this time around I have the added benefit of bone armor and a magiluminescence. Because I have just one bone armor, I'm going to swap between that and a marble suit while I'm attacking during the first phase. Once she hits phase 2, I'm going to throw on the mag and start spamming the pan flute. The added speed from the mag means I'll have an easier time chasing her for the extra hits while she screams at her grumblebees to wake up. So fewer pan fluces Fluces? So fewer pan flute uses will be needed this time around. During the final two phases, I'm going to alternate between these two methods. Luring the bees away, running back to tank a little bit, then blowing the pan flute to get one more free round of hits. A lot of item switching going on, but we're definitely saving on a lot more resources this time around because of all the body slot juggling. She lost her wetness during the final phase, but I was still able to finish her off at that point. Day 260, we get a second frog rain of the season while I'm herding geckos into the pen. I'm not sure if the frogs attack geckos, but I'd assume they do. So instead of risking one dropping into the pen and terrorizing my babies, I run away. We do have a Musku spawner close to Oasis, so I might run over there in the future next time we get frog rain, but for now I'm just going to chill and deciduous until the event passes. Day 263, I'm running through the swamp for reeds. Now I was pretty happy with this swamp generation. There's no reed trap, but I don't really mind running around for like half a day to gather a stack of reeds. I'll mainly be using them for bird cages and recrafting pan flutes. During Winter's Feast, I'll probably want more for Gift Wrap, but I'm gonna try not to rely on Honey Poultice too much so I can minimize the amount of swamp trips needed. The last day of spring, I'm planting my birch nuts in preparation for my next autumn harvest. I'm gonna spend the summer down in the caves, so next time I'll check on them will be at the beginning of autumn. The growth stages are random, but I'm anticipating a harvest a few days into autumn after they've had all summer to grow. But we'll see. Day 267, I killed Antlion, mostly because I wasn't sure how long I was going to be in the caves, and I wanted it to be safe if I decided to return back to the surface before the end of summer. It was a pretty nice no damage fight. I really don't like tanking her because this fight can go south really fast. If you're interested in my strategy, I'll post a link to the video I made on how to semi-safely kite her. Now the ruins are currently cleared, but I have a few other things I want to do in summer. The first is obtaining the blueprints for all six replica relics. Now a lot of players may not know this, but you know all those relics you find in the ruins like the chairs, the tables, the plateware? You can actually unlock all of those structures as crafting recipes, and you do this at the completed pseudoscience set piece in the ruins. You gotta place six different combinations of six unique items into the ancient chest near the station. The first three items are always a Thulocyte medallion, a cut stone, and a nightmare fuel. The other three items range in oddness, from birds to bunnies, butterflies, even petals. Now two of the recipes call for berries. I only have juicy berry bushes generated in my overworld, and I didn't actually know if the chest would accept juicy berries in the item combinations. Turns out, they don't. So unless I have at least one normal So unless I have at least one normal berry bush in the caves, then I would be forced to hunt for berries in tumbleweeds, which is a 1% chance, or befriend a cat coon and pray for it to vomit a berry, which is a 0.11% chance. This seems a little unfair. I mean, a berry was clearly not intended to be this difficult to obtain, and I wasn't about to spend my entire summer digging through tumbleweeds. Some viewers just wanted me to spawn in the berries, but I settled on running a console command that just checked to see if I had any regular berry bushes in the caves. Turns out I had two. 
So I went on a bit of a scavenger hunt to find at least one of them. I was salty, but at least I had an excuse to map out more of the cave system. And oh buddy, am I glad I did that exploring because I discovered a brand new area of the ruins that was close enough to the atrium for lazy explorer access. This is such an incredible find, and it's not that common on cave generation anymore. It also puts us about halfway closer to the gateway room than the tentapillar did. I was very excited for next Fuel Weaver. And a few days later, we found one of the two elusive berry bushes chilling out in a giant, nondescript, sunken forest biome. I picked the berry and I bundled it. If I don't find the other bush, then I'll just come back here and pick the second berry when that bush regrows. And luck would have it, I have two more tasks that will take almost exactly that amount of time. The first task is to go catch some bulbous light bugs in the Lunar Grotto. These guys replace light bulbs in the biome, and if you have one in your inventory, then up to three more will follow you around and provide a pretty decent light radius. They are very fragile though, and they won't last too long around dangerous mobs. So I'm catching them with a net and bundling them up. Once I get back home, I'm gonna just pop them down and let them wander freely around my base. It'll be nice to have some form of infinite light available just in case I get stupid and run out of light while I'm basing. And while I'm over here, I wanna dip into the archive to grab some of the turf. I don't have an opal yet, so I can't do the forgotten knowledge puzzles, but it's better to keep the archive inactive for now anyway, so I can harvest the floor without centripede attacks. And that's it for year four. Next time we're gonna finish up the relic blueprints and return back to the surface for our giant Berger harvest. Hope you're enjoying the recap videos. I know I have a few more years to catch up on, so I'll be trying to push those out as quickly as possible. In the meantime, I hope to see you on Twitch for the next stream. Take care.